Welcome back to another edition of Zero Blog 30. Today we have two rounds in the magazine. Round number one, we're going to talk about some fears. I saw on Reddit that there was a fella that was a little nervous about trying to join the military, and he gave some reasons why we're going to have to talk about that because it's one of the most nonsensical reasons I've ever heard. And then I also went through Reddit and found some of the other things that people were scared for joining. So we're going to talk about those as well. And then in round number two, President Trump this week talked about some folks that were getting shipped to America for a bunch of different reasons. We're going to see if that myth is true or if it's not true. Still, even if it's not true, I I love the story. It's great. And it made me laugh, which lots of them do. What didn't make me laugh this week is all the snowmageddon but cons, I think we talked about it with Nicholas a couple months ago, a lot of months ago, I guess, that I didn't really ever care about my lawn. I didn't care about any of that stuff, doing it, chopping wood. I will say this is drastically different when it comes to snow blowing. And I think it's because if you mow your lawn, the only person that gets gratification out of it is you. None of your mm -hmm. other neighbors give a shit if you are mowing your yard. That's not yard. true. That's I, not true at all. As long I'm as it's you not right completely now. unkempt. If it's not completely unkempt, yeah. like a very normal, I mow my lawn like every other week or something like that. Nobody gives a shit if it's perfect or if there's lines or anything like that. They might right, compliment okay, you, but people don't really care. Snow blowing. No, so long as it doesn't look like crap, yeah. Yeah. Snow blowing, I feel like, is a totally different paint job there's a fella in my neighborhood who he the first day that it was really snowing, we had a decent amount of snow, like six inches or something like that. He came out with his Honda snowblower that self propelled, went yeah. down two separate blocks and was doing both sides of the street and was just like, hey, the kids are going to school. I'm going to make sure that everything's taken care of. And I was like, what a move from this dude, because he just alpha the shit out of every other dad. Right, I, I did. I don't know that that's an alpha move so much as that's just a neighborly no. move. It's not saying, oh, no. "Hey, I'm doing this because you can't." I oh, think it's no. saying, "Hey, I'm already out here and doing it." Like that's the alpha my, move, cons. That's the no, alpha. That's alpha. A little part of them that knows. Nice. Like no. I, I can remember knows. all the housewives on the block yeah. are looking out their windows and then looking back at their husband on the recliner, going, "Huh, wouldn't it be nice to feel a little more like Tom?" Happened to me, yeah. like. He's out there doing it. You want to get out there and go do our neighbor's yard and stuff like. So I got my dumb ass up. No, and I so went if and did it's our a, neighbor's I think if it's an alpha move, it's only an alpha move for those men in the neighborhood who are insecure about themselves and know that they don't want to go do it. Oh please! If, like Khan. if you know full well you're please. already going to go do it. Do you think it? I'm insecure about my manhood? You think that's yeah. me? A little bit. Of when it all comes people, to you think snow? I'm concerned? When it comes to the guy that wears snow, snow? my dad. That is crazy. Funny. Buddy, your wife doesn't think you can do it until you do it. You I gotta think prove it to I her. Couldn't do it. Are you kidding me? She said that I'm not doing it. That's the same thing with the people in the summer. I could go out and mow my lawn. The alpha dad is out there, 7:30, looking out with his cup of coffee and being like, ah, "I'm drinking it up, drinking it." It gives in. you volunteer fireman energy. Never yeah. stop. My dad finally got one, that. and it gave him volunteer it's... fireman energy. And whenever there was a big snow, he would start going door to door. Hey, just let you know I'm out here. I'll get I'll take care of your driveway. But then he'd say, he'd also say, but I am thirsty. And he would get beers from everyone on the block. Yeah. So, that's, see, that's a good listen, exchange. I think there's there's a lot of tools out there, power tools, that when you get an opportunity to use them, you relish that opportunity. Oh, big time. It's a fun tool. Snowblower falls in that category. Chainsaw falls in that category. Yeah. So I, that's why I don't think it's an alpha move. I think it's like you're already out there. You're having a good time. You're not trying to do it to like make someone feel bad that they're not doing it. Not making feel for bad. More stuff to plow. Has nothing to do with making somebody else feel bad. You know for a fact. I don't know why you're Sounds acting like this way, Cons. You know problem. for a fact the dot the dads that go out there at 5 a.m. They're out there at 5 a.m. They're sitting there with their coffee. You know they go back inside and they're like, hell yeah, I did that for the whole neighborhood. Now, And every other person sees that they did it. So whenever they come out, the next time you see that guy that went by, hey, thanks, man. We appreciate you doing the sidewalks for everybody. That gas, that level of serotonin jump that you have has got to be unparalleled. And I'm going to experience it 
I told Annalise I wouldn't buy an expensive snowblower this year. Next year, best one on the market. I'm going to do all of my entire neighborhood. The whole village is going to be done by me. I'm going to block off the roads and make sure that I'm going out there even when it's blocked off. I'm going to do the streets too. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, I just don't think it's an alpha move. I think it's just a neighborly move. No, I disagree. I, maybe, maybe. Well, because also here, chap, like this is your first time experiencing consistent snow. Like I grew up in a neighborhood where that sort of thing was just commonplace. And like I think back to like my nana, she lived alone on, until eventually she passed away. Her Mr. Gary across the street would always come with his up, tractor Gary. and plow her driveway. Shouts to Mr. Gary. It was and he got the thanks. Neighborly. That's the entire point. The thanks of a whole neighborhood has got to make you feel like a million bucks. Has yes, it makes you feel good a thousand percent. I'm not disagreeing with you there. I don't think most guys do it to alpha the other dads. They do it because they want to help their neighbors and be neighbors. Be I think it's the same thing with your lawn. I think there's an element of pride and there's an element of wanting to kick somebody's ass and another thing. I think that everybody, and you of all people, I'm shocked at this because you're so competitive. I, yeah, I feel listen, like you're being an integrity violator. Just straight no, up, I I'm think you're being an integrity you, violator. No, when it comes to just being a good neighbor, I'm all about just everyone being a good neighbor and, and not trying to make other neighbors look bad. I'm doing I, both. I worry. I worry that you're gonna, you know, go overboard and, and, and in an effort to make other dads well, look bad. Right. My dad got his house. new snowblower I'm back in the day. Right. Got the volunteer fireman energy. Went over to the neighbors to do their driveway. Ended up <laughs> sucking up their entire dog, super long dog leash line, into a snowblower. Uh, See, dog yeah. and everything. Dog Baby and Dale, everything. I did right shoot some dog poop huh? across the yard. Yeah, the dog poop because Baby Dale, when it was super snowy and icy. Yeah, that motherfucker's not going in the snow, dude. He like he found the spots that I had cleared already, went and shot there. Then when I came back to do it again, there was more shit that he had done. And I threw shit so hard it smashed it against my garage. And that made me laugh a lot. <laughs> Fucking baby Dale. All right, let's get into the actual show today. We have some concerns about people who are joining the military. Kate, what's the first concern um, that somebody being has? Being too hot probably for the military. That was my main concern before I joined. I was like, am I too hot for this? Am I? Yeah. Uh, I mm -hmm. And I was indeed a mm -hmm. 7.2 at one point in Afghanistan. So pretty hot. But anyway, yeah. now this is from uh, our military FAQ. Leaving to basic soon, but can't swallow pills. Will I be kicked out? Just a random question, but I'm leaving for basic soon. I was told they make you take a good amount of pills at reception. And a couple other times, but all my life, I haven't been able to take pills because they get stuck in my throat and I choke. What am I supposed to do if I can't swallow pills properly? Is this something I can talk to them about or am I just screwed? And what pills are they giving you? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't remember, remember a, a single, single pill. pill. <laughs> shots, yeah. Like lots of vaccines, lots of different shots. But pills? What pill? Think about it right now. Hold on really quickly. Really, what pill could you the even only think one, they would make you take? 800 so milligrams Motrin, of Motrin. The only thing I can think of yeah, is the um, anti-malaria pills they made us take that made us all have crazy dreams in Afghanistan. But even then, we didn't. nobody yeah. was like forcing it down our throats. So a lot of us just stopped taking it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I wonder who's telling them this about the pills because definitely not true. But I used to have this issue. I used to have a lot of... I could see that I could because you chew on stuff for an eight hours when a, you eat a gummy bear and you're going to be eating it like it's Christmas dinner. Like it's going to take you two hours. Don't ever go time. out to eat with Kate unless you have like a block of four hours. That yeah. Or she can eat it in the I car. I have a super hard time. Yeah. I still have a hard time swallowing pills, but at least I can. But it was all mental. It was like a mental block for some reason that like I couldn't do it. And then I started anti-depression pills a few years ago and I got one of those bad boys stuck in my throat. And oh my God the burn the burn i called the va i was like mm. blah, 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 blah. and she was like did you try to eat a cookie eat a cookie and i was like i can't swallow you dumb bitch ah! anyway you had a pill stuck in your throat and you called the va to get they like the remedy of it, what it to was, do the burning was so intense with <laughs> no it was oh like from acid reflex is that what That's you're talking the about generic name for i forget what and if you google it People don't realize you have to take that particular antidepressant with a shit ton of water because if it gets stuck in your throat, it will burn like a fire for 24 hours. 
And that's what happened to me. And I was like, excuse me, this anti-anxiety pill is causing me an enormous amount of anxiety right now because it's starting to burn. And then I was on my floor for like a whole day while it burned a hole in my esophagus. And so, yeah, I called the VA. I was like, I cannot get this pill out. I could breathe, but I can't move it. What do I do? And they were like, have you tried swallowing a cookie? I was like, honey, I can't swallow this pill. They were going to swallow a cookie. I can't. I mean, I guess I. I... <laughs> what a ridiculous yeah. suggestion yeah. of all yeah. the different things. Like you're a toddler. Yeah. Like go give him I a cookie. Like, like go, but also a cookie. cookies like dry. And I, I think that would only yeah. exasperate the problem, not yes, help it. I think Why I would was you right. so annoying on the phone water. and such a that's, pussy that's on the phone weird. that she wanted me to die. I think she was like, have you tried putting another pill on top of that pill? Mm. Um, and if you're listening from Kate, the VA, we don't really yeah, think that yeah, you no, wanted no, Kate no. to die. Thanks for the pill. No. <laughs> Do you all, I, I, I'm always flabbergasted by people who take pills without some sort of drink to go along with them. People who take pills dry. I it, don't get that. It depends on what size it is. If it goes up to 800 milligrams, I can't do it. But if we're talking about like uh, Allegra or like a normal pill size, that's like Tylenol. I could pop those in like, and that eat them like nerds, a real like, no problem. Mouth. Mm. Another alpha dad energy. No water with your anyway, pills you and your said, face. Take cons. a lot of water. For right, the love of God. Less than less. Okay. All right. What's the second one? So Kate? Uh, my answer to them would be, don't worry about it. There's no pills. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Number two. Yeah, I'm not currently a problem. speaking with a Marine recruiter. I have a fairly decent idea of what the training will consist of. I'm a little nervous, but something I never really had to think about before just hit me. I'm terrified of flying. I suppose flying is okay. It's just the height factor. Even thinking about it shakes me up. I'm probably yeah, overthinking. That's part of it. But I'm told <laughs> not to MEPS, not to tell MEPS. I'm also told not to go on one without a little mental preparation. So I was curious, like, has anyone else had to overcome this fear? I know it's irrational. I've almost drowned twice, but I'm not afraid of the water. Uh, but basically, yeah, this person is terrified of flying. That's going to be a problem. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's going to be a fucking problem. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a deal breaker. If you can't fly, I don't know. Even if you're, I mean, if you go to a combat zone, unless you're in the Navy, you're probably going on a flight for sure. Mm. I don't, I mean, even if you're stationed, like if you graduate boot camp from Fort Benning and then you have to go to Seward or something like that, you're flying. And they're not going to be like, oh, well, this soldier, he needs to take the Amtrak. No, like, and that's even not me, like, happen. I never thought I would wind up yeah. in anything more than a C 130. And I was in helos at night pretty low over like lash carga in the middle of my you never know when you're going to end up flying like if you're afraid of flying with the door wide open in the back and the gunner hanging out like you're probably not going to do well in that situation you know i remember the first time i got in a black hawk i had no idea like because i had never been in one before so i didn't know how to work the seatbelt. <laughs> And we were getting ready to take off, and the door is wide open and going to stay open. Well, let me, I was, let I was me guess. My pants, man. I thought I was going to be able to. You get my would rather on. fall out fall than out. have to ask somebody else how to use your seatbelt on the. One hundred percent insecure yes. with your I manhood, just, right there. I just, I just stood there and, and tried to. I eventually figured it out, but um, <laughs> no, I think it's a, that, that. But there have to have been people who join the military who are afraid of flying. That's a pretty common fear, I think. Yeah, but that moment. Like he's saying with the helicopter door or the tail end open whenever you're flying, whenever you're, if there's another chopper that's behind and you could see it in the air too, it makes you want to play <laughs> Wayward Son so bad. Yeah. Like yeah. so bad. If I had but that I on my That's Zoom, a different level. That's a different level of being afraid. Like, okay, it's one thing to get in a plane that has every door closed. You start getting up in the aircraft with open doors. That's a horse of a different color. And I can and understand so even more people loud. being scared. And also, it's yeah, so loud, loud in there, and that Damn, oil, cool whatever the hell. oil is, splurting all over the place. How in 2024 have we not figured out how to make helicopters not splurt oil all over? I mean, Psyche had it all in his hair, poor guy. Mm. Damn copters. Um, also, too, if you're afraid of heights, you got to do the oak course and all squirt. that shit. You're not going to do But you can overcome Lots it. Better help. No. Um, I'm right, thinking about joining the military, one, but I've been diagnosed with arachibutriophobia arachibutriophobia and that is long time stoolie abacatruchiovia uh the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof <laughs> yep. of your mouth some with this condition may be able to eat small amounts of peanut butter but others will completely avoid it pretty much the rest of their lives i've heard boot camp will work around your peanut allergy but what about the fear 
of peanut butter. I think this is a superpower. Okay. Being because scared every of MRE, peanut butter? Yes, because every MRE you open, when you get peanut butter, you're going to give that that sucker oh, away, and you're going to be everybody's best friend. Good I think point. peanut butter is a hot commodity in MREs. So I think you'll be everybody's friend very quickly. Mary fuck kill. Let's do Mary fuck kill. Mm -hmm. You got wheat snack bread. We got jala no, 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 not wheat snack bread. Let's go regular cheese, jalapeno cheese, peanut butter. And your okay. source that you're putting it on is wheat snack bread. Okay. I'm killing regular cheese right off the bat. Okay. I'm marrying peanut butter and I'm I'm engaging in a, a fling with jalapeno I'm fucking cheese. peanut butter and I'm uh, marrying uh, jalapeno cheese. And you're right. Regular cheese gets killed. Yeah, same hey, what's with Kate. The only That's where thing, I'm at What's the only well. thing you really All right, let's need in an MRE? Hot sauce? The, the cheese spread. You Toilet need paper? it with your hands before you open it. Oh, uh, my God. Okay. Boo. But yeah, that, don't tell them about the peanut Boo. butter shot that they get going through. They don't need that, too. <laughs> True, um, yeah. If I can All show right, that it one? will give me overwhelming anxiety, can I keep my phone in my locker in the bathroom at boot camp? I won't use it. I feel better if it was close by. Do you think I can get away with that? Just join the army. They let me use it the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Join the army. Right. Don't join one of the Air Force. Too. Don't join a hard branch. Join promise. The army. <laughs> yeah, you can have your phone. Yeah. <laughs> Just give them a pinky promise. I think that they you, even you let you keep you your mommy your on the top. That's all it takes a pinky neat. promise. That's cute, too. <laughs> Yeah, the, I think the phone one's definitely not. But I could see. I mean, that legit might be part of the recruiting problem, you know, because that wasn't like a concern for us. Really. No, like you didn't have that. But if you are telling like somebody that's addicted to Snapchat, addicted to TikTok, and you're like, hey, you're going to have this job. But for 13 weeks, you're not going to be able to go online and see anything. You have no idea. What if you're in boot camp when it comes out that Nancy Reagan's the throat go? You're gonna miss that whole thing. What if yeah, you miss? Think about Nancy all. Biden? Think about all the great news you're coming back to when you're back able to get online and all the crazy stories that you missed. To just get that flood right. of 13 weeks worth, especially if you're a, a hot man feeling. or woman, you're very yeah. good looking. Think of all the likes you're missing and all the social media of yours that's not growing. Oh, yeah. That means less hot people are gonna join the military, which means less. Horny people are going to join the military looking mm. for the hot people, and it starts a downward spiral. I would what, uh, absolutely oh. have the Buddhist photos too. Yeah. When I came out <laughs> out of thirteen weeks, the shit that I would have posted, I'm so Dude, glad I didn't have it now. God, these that we missed young that folks, we missed that curve. Thank you, God. Right, we would be the biggest fucking losers. Oh, chat. Well, and probably what kind charged. of phone? Like we, what I, kind of phone did you guys have? I don't know if cons, but me and Kate, if we had phones like that, oh. we'd be charged. Like, without a doubt, we'd be getting court-martialed for shitting off the side of a seven-ton and goofing around like that. We'd absolutely yeah, smoking humby, get court-martialed. Smoking and joking. Goofing. Yeah. What, I'm curious, though, and this is going to show all of our ages. What kind of phone did you have when you went into the military? Uh, Nokia Brick. I remember when I was in the yeah. Camp Pendleton Mall kiosk guy got me to get a chocolate razor or whatever, a razor chocolate. And I remember my ring back oh, yeah. tone was, oh, I'm a chicken fry. Cold beer on a Friday night, you know. <laughs> oh, figuring out what your ringtone would have yeah. been was incredible. Speaking yeah. of razors, the Motorola razors, when I came back from Japan and I was in Pendleton too, I went to go get a phone. And the guy was like, "Hey, right now, if you get a if you get a contract, then you get a free razor phone." And I had been in Japan for like four years, and I was like, "What's a razor phone?" And the dude looked at me like I had a dick grown out of my forehead. Yeah. He was like, "How do you not yeah. know what a razor phone is, guy?" That was easily the coolest of all the flip phones. Was the oh, razor? Oh, without phone. a doubt. I think <laughs> yeah. Andrew Luck still uses one. He might. He might. <laughs> so. I I just remember though, I had like one of the like, I don't know, it was like an LG something or other. Um, I actually didn't even have it when I when I showed up to school though. I, I got it like while I was a freshman, so I didn't even have a phone when I showed up. That's yeah. how old I am. Jeez. See, I think that's what's making these kids not want to do it. Sometimes All right, what's the I don't next have one? an extreme reaction when even just thinking about string, let alone seeing it in person. I will avoid string or anything having to do with string, such as sewing or tying shoes. 
If we have to sew in boot camp, I will kill myself on the spot. <laughs> Buddy's going to see a roll of 550 cord and collapse. <laughs> I mean, an Irish now, pen is going to make him lose his mind. Then. But yeah. yeah, a lot of the day you have to like, learn how to lace your boots and all that stuff. And I mean, there's so much strength. I mean, just think about how much stuff you tie down with 550. Let alone the though. It's, bracelets it's all every, you guys are wearing. I mean, those 550 for friendship bracelets and all that stuff. Mm. Yeah, this person is screwed. True. <laughs> your little, your little friendship bracelets that you guys wear. <laughs> yeah, we should do that instead of like t- Swifty just says Battle Bud on it. Just a couple I of Battle Buds that. with really their bracelets. I love that idea, to be honest with you. I want to join the All Navy right, like my one. grandfather and mother. I want to go to a unit where I won't have to be on a ship. I have an intense fear of the ocean or deep open water. How can I avoid water in the Navy or should I join the Army instead? <sighs> I feel like being around water I is a big the part of the Force, Navy. But right? fuck yes. the moon, yeah. dude. I'm not into it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My recommendations for not branches would be first up the Coast Guard, second the Navy, and then mm. third the Marines. Like you, those are the ones yeah, that you say, want to I want to join avoid. the Navy, but I'm terrified of overweight people in uniform. Uh then buddy, don't do it. Don't yeah. run into it. <laughs> What if you can't what I wonder if this fear gets beaten if you can't see the water. Like if he's in a submarine. Yeah, submarine's probably his best, his that best option for if you're afraid of the deep ocean. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah you claustrophobia go. and the deep ocean. I'll help out. Maybe claustrophobia sure. is not an issue. Yeah, um, if you're dealing with all kinds of different stressors, maybe you should talk segue. to our friends. What a better segment help. segue. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, and conveniently enough, Zero Blog 30 is sponsored by BetterHelp. So, you know, right around, we're, we're coming into the, the tail end of the first month of the year. And around the years, everybody gets obsessed with how to change yourselves instead of just expanding on what you're already doing right. Because Plenty of people are already doing good things, so focus on that. Maybe you finally organized one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find those strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. I know when I was going through a massive transition from a apartment to a house, I needed therapy in addition to needing my wife more than anything. I needed my Mm -hmm. wife, but I needed therapy to help me through that. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've already made, folks. Focus on that. Visit BetterHelp.com slash zero today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com. Com slash zero. I actually like better help too. Cause I was talking to my therapist this week and sometimes whenever it's on video chat, like we're talking on video chat right now, you can almost feel like it's performative, you know, like for somebody with a personality like mine, whenever I'm on with the therapist, I feel mm-hmm. like I still have to be entertaining that I'm going <laughs> to be engaged and things like that. This week, what we were talking about something and I made a joke and she was like, Matthew, stop it. We're being serious. You're not entertaining me. I'm your therapist. And I was like, you (laughs) got me. You got me right where I stand. So shout out BetterHelp. They got good therapists, man. Check it out. All right, let's move on to round number two. All right. On at least three occasions over the last two months, former President Donald Trump, if you hear heavy snorting, my my two-month-old with a nose cold is sitting right next to me here. Um, On the last three occasions over the last two months, former President Donald Trump has claimed that the leaders of unnamed South American countries are deliberately emptying their insane asylums and mental institutions, his words, to send the patients to the United States as migrants. In each version of the story, Trump has claimed he recently read about a doctor at a South American mental institution who said he used to be busy but now has no work because all his patients are in the U.S., I kind of love this. I kind of love this. Um, in, right. in each version, um, oh, in mid-April, in a speech to the NRA, Trump said, I read a story not long ago where a man who takes care of a large segment of people in a mental institution in a South American country, a doctor, sounded like a great man, actually. He said he no longer has anything to do. He used to work 24-hour days. 
All of our patients have been released to the United States of America. I like, you don't have to say where you heard it. You don't have to give any details. You don't have to go. That's all you need is a loose story that enrages people. And it's fact to those people. And when he, when he was asked, Kate, when he was asked about which country, he said, I would tell you, but it's a country <laughs> you never even heard of. Like, I'm sure we've heard of all the countries at this point. Yeah. So he was like, you don't know this country. It goes to a different school. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I came up with, because there are a bunch of different countries that we haven't heard of. So I came up with a list and I'm going to ask Cons and Kate if it's a real country or okay. if it's a fake country. So if it's real, you guys say real, fake. It says fake. And there's 10 examples. The first up is Tavalu. Do you Tavalu is a small island nation located in the Pacific Ocean. It's one of the world's smallest country, both in terms of land area and population. Tavalu is known for its vulnerability and rising sea levels due to climate change. Is Tavalu real or not real? Cons? I mean, you get into the the Pacific. There's a billion islands out there, but I don't know. That name I want to say, fake, so is I'll it where it. that viral wave Kate? video just came from? From the military outpost that got slammed with the wave and all those people got swept away and injured, but they're fine now. But did you see that video? Holy shit balls. Yeah, is that, I did that see that video. I think it's Do you real. think it's real or if it's fake, Kate? This is a real country. I don't know if it oh. has anything to do with that wave that Kate's talking about, but I'm going to go ahead and say it does. So pray for the folks in Tuvalu because of that big old wave. Second up, Veridia. Veridia is a picturesque island nation in the South Pacific known for its lush rainforests and vibrant coral reefs. It has a small, close-knit population that values, uh, that values environmental conservation. Real or fake? Veridia. <sighs> It sounds Kate, like we'll go first. That with you sounds this like time. something I'd have a really hard time telling my partner that I had it. <laughs> it does. Uh, Sorry, I got another case in? of Veridia. Yeah. Anybody got what was that horse? Uh, um, oh, Invermectin. What is it? The... Invermectin to treat my yeah, ver ver Vermidia or whatever this is. Also, doctors and pharmacists, how do they say all those medicine names? I would never. Even if I was smart enough to be a doctor, yeah, I wouldn't tough. be able to say those. But yeah, names no, I'm gonna ever. say. Fake. I think they say it. They they say them however they want to say them, and because they have MD next to their name, people sure just do. take them at their word. That's a fair point, Cons. Do you think Veridia fake. is real or fake? I'm going fake on this one. That one is a fake nation. Uh, Nairu is the third smallest country in the world by land area, and it is located in Central Pacific Ocean. It was once known for its phosphorus mining industry and its ec uh, economy has faced challenges in recent years. It sounds real. so real that I'm going to say fake. That one's real. That's a real country. And by the way, if you're not watching, go to Rumble or our YouTube and you can find it. There's some I'm going to put pictures on there like whenever we're talking about this. This Nairu place is fucking gorgeous. I don't know how I haven't heard of it. I don't know what's going on there, the social political environment, but I want to go. Their only it prejudice is against bald men with red beards. <laughs> yeah, that would be terrible for me. That would be awesome. Uh, next one up, San Marino. San Marino is located. Uh, it's landlocked microstate entirely surrounded by Italy. It is one of the world's oldest republics with a rich history dating back to AD 301. And despite its size, San Marino maintains its independence and its this sovereignty. Country, this San Marino. Used to play for the Dolphins, what do you think? Right? San Marino. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, did he play Shout for not Pittsburgh. Dolphins? Oh, great. He played for the Dolphins oh, and Pittsburgh, good. like University of Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> Cons, what do you think? San Marino, real or not real? Fake. Real. Kate, that one's real too. <laughs> the next okay. one, Zarnor. Um, it's a, <laughs> it's a <laughs> mystical. That's, that's more don't know mystical. That's fake. Wait, don't yeah, jump okay. the gun. Listen to the description, okay. Kate. It might change your mind. It's the mystical desert realm in North Africa where ancient ruins and hidden oasis hold secrets of the lost civilization. Normatic tribes, nomadic tribes, roam the sands in search of treasure and knowledge. Fake. Fake or real? Fake. Whoa. No, actually, it's real. Wow. 
come on. Yeah, it's real. And it's and it's one of the countries that really? Aladdin talks about, actually. Oh. No, it's fake. It's fake as yeah. shit. That's a fake one. That cool. <laughs> um, here's another one. Penglava. Penglava is a picturesque con uh, coastal country in Southeast Asia. It's known for vibrant street markets, delicious cuisine, and a rich cultural heritage that draws tourists from all over the world. Yeah. Again, it's Pangea. No, because you're into Pangea and no, fake. probably lava now. I, I'd say fake. <laughs> I could become a big lava guy. You guys are right. That's a fake one. Here's another one. Real. Andorra. Andorra is a small landlocked country. They're famous yeah. for the you know Andorra that one's sweaters. Real? Yeah. True. They are. And they're oh, Pyrenees mountain yeah. dogs. Pyrenees mountain dogs are fantastic, but they do have one genetic defect that makes it really difficult if they're in the <laughs> wild. One of... And they got a dew claw that's absolutely enormous, and you get got to get that thing chopped damn. off in a heartbeat. Yeah, you got to feel for animals like that. Sorry, out in the oh. wild, because there's no you know veterinarian that they're going to go to and, and be helped. So you just got to suffer. Oh. That stinks. Exactly right. Comoros. Comoros is an island nation located in the Indian Ocean off the east coast of Africa. It consists of four main islands and has a diverse Fake. cultural heritage. Real. Uh. Real again, yes, absolutely right. Cons, uh, Sao Tome and Principa, located That's in the real. Gulf of what I say, real. Sorry, cons, you're, you're violating the rules of the game. I'm not even introducing. Sorry, it. this is like, I mean, you're a Jeopardy guy. This is like buzzing yeah. in before Alex is done with the question. You can't do it. RIP, Alex. Okay, sorry, yeah. keep going. so Sao Tome and Principe is an island nation off the west coast of Central Africa. It is known for its biodiversity and cocoa pop uh, production. Real. Kate, real or fake? Cons? Real. That's a real one. And finally, Estewani, formerly known as Swaziland. Estewani is landlocked in Southern Africa and is known for its monarchy and rich cultural traditions. Real. I feel like Swaziland's always changing names. True. Yeah, I'll say real on that one too. And that one's real. Good job, guys. You guys did pretty good on that. Hopefully, none of those people are getting shipped to America. Actually, I don't know. What care. did you just like, say? Come on. We got plenty of room. <laughs> I don't know. Come, I mean, I was driving when I was driving up here, we got all kinds of land. Like we should let people come, but you can't you gotta come and hang out okay. in one of these the small screeching spots. crying baby <laughs> simple. I just right? gotta say really quick, I've been spending a lot of time in this rocket chair because I threw my back out. And you're talking about these countries and how beautiful they are. Smithsonian Channel, Aerial America, 45 minute episodes where he just takes a drone over every state and shows you all the cool shit. Oh my God, it's the fucking oh, best, cool. dude. It makes you fall in love with America all over again. There you go. I'll definitely watch that. <laughs> all right, Kate's going on mute. All right, let's move on to some save rounds and alibis. Cons, we'll start with you. Can we start right there with? That story, though, because, I mean, it's just crazy. And, and it's not, I don't think, unique to Trump. I think it's anybody these days. If you just spout something, plenty of people will take it as gospel. But more so, and I was talking to Alex about this, it's becoming more and more real that he is probably going to be the Republican nominee for the presidency in the fall. And I almost think we need to collectively, as a country, have a conversation and just prepare accordingly. Because I'm worried about what that's going to bring based oh, yeah. on how the last, you know, decade has played out or, you know, almost decade back, you know, going to his first presidency. I, I think people need to start mentally preparing. Like he's going to be the nominee. He's going to say things that are going to be wrong, not truthful, that are going to be mean spirited. They're going to annoy you. I just I'm 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 worried. I feel for, like for what, quietly a lot brings. of people kind of miss the kookiness, you know. I feel like people uh I feel like people are almost nostalgic for it in a weird in a weird way. I don't know. No. I disagree. I think that I mean, I just don't everything is a conspiracy theory and it's driving me insane, man. Yeah. Like even Kyle posted a old producer Kyle, he posted a tweet thread that they get the comments that they get on task and purpose. And this week, I'm sure anybody that's listening knows there was two Navy SEALs who were lost trying to oh, do yeah. a rescue operation this week. 
and they did searches for about 10 days. And finally, two days ago, the Department of Defense said that they are going to classify them as missing or KIA whenever they are like they suspended the search and things like that. But in that, one of the most widely covered stories that there is from the DOD, you have family members that are expressing their um, all kinds of sympathies and their their remorse, all those different things. And in his comments on task and purpose was like, that's a false flag and shit like that. People don't believe anything. And if everything yeah. is a conspiracy theory, nobody is. And I think one of the parts about this show that I like, we don't try to act like we're a whole no, lot smarter than deal. we are. Every, everything can't Never. be a conspiracy theory. And that's what it's turning into. The election's fake. COVID's fake. The Navy SEALs who passed away are fake. The mass shootings are fake. January 6th is fake. All these different things are fake, except for you can see them. Like you're, you're being told things aren't real that you can fucking yeah. see. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm reminded of, I was always told uh, years ago, you know, you only um, believe nothing. What's, what's the saying? Believe nothing of what you hear and only half of what you see. But even still, like if you see it with your own two eyes, I think that's pretty real. And also, why would who benefits from making the up tabal. two Navy SEALs losing their lives? That, that's why, why would that conspiracy be... on who benefits from it? That's... Two cons. It's like it's crazy. Yeah, they're saying that that loss will make people want to go to war with the Halfies and oh my stuff gosh. like that. It's so ridiculous. But anyway, um, just I guess. Big picture, just maybe not necessarily looking forward to this election cycle. Uh, I don't know what to expect. Uh, but based on the fact that there's just so much disinformation out there and there's just going to be people taking everything said as gospel. I mean, I saw someone put something on their Instagram story the other day that was so very clearly from a uh, parody account, but they absolutely posted it in earnest. Like, oh, yeah, classic. Can't believe this person said that. And it's like, you don't get that that was a joke that that's the level to of, be fair that's yeah. hard to parse now cons like, yeah i guess like because you would never assume that somebody who is a front runner for one of the american parties is saying that a country that nobody ever heard of is sending all their mentally ill people to the point that that small country has a psychiatrist who has no one to see yeah, like that. yeah. just i mean it's ah, crazy i don't know anyway um one of the um, irrational fears I thought about when we were talking about joining the military, I bet you there's a lot of people that have an irrational fear about being naked in front of it's other people. It's rational if you have and a shamrock tramp camp. Yeah. And a weird birthmark yeah. over your butt crack. <laughs> or if you have um, the dick so small that whenever you're getting your initial inspection, that whenever the first sergeant or company commander is sitting there and they ask you, I'm going to fuck it. I'm going to say it. Recruit where the fuck is your I penis? Got, I, like, that's a bad what? moment. Bad I moment. I bet that keeps some people the fear of getting made fun of for a small penis. I, 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 yeah. Like, what if you have huge dangly flaps? Uh, like, you wouldn't want to Well, your bush is so big. They take your raisins away. You can't. <laughs> yeah, but what if you had flaps no that were like basset hound Not years? that those are mine. <laughs> All right, all anything else, Conch? Yeah, last thing. Um, I don't have I watched, it down, Just It's like, interesting no. now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Good you for know, you, I'm, Kate. I'm, uh, turning 40 this year, you know, obviously I, everybody knows I just moved and I'm a new father. It's interesting, though, how certain movies you watch through a completely different lens after you go through certain parts of your life. And two that I've watched recently that hit home differently – one is this is 40 for obvious reasons. Um, but then also neighbors oh, with uh Seth Rogen. When the frat and, moves uh, next door, face? they have the baby I'm and the frat moves name, next door or whatever. Yeah. Yes. 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 I don't know. I just um it's just interesting that I, I found certain jokes to be funnier or just heard them differently now that I'm almost 40 and I have a, a daughter who's almost seven months old. So those two <laughs> movies just kind of stood out to me. I was just curious if you guys had any movies that when you watch them after becoming parents or a little bit older, how they, um, they changed. Well, you. I know it put other things about mm. my brother had kids way before me. And I remember coming back to the, my parents would get a little beach shanty every year. And in my party days coming back and my brother being like, do not wake the babies. 
And because I would go into the kitchen and try and make like a Chinese food sandwich with garlic bread or some shit at two in the morning. And, and I'd be like, what a fucking does. Does a stick up his ass so hard. Blah, blah, blah. And now when Pat shuts yeah, the like, wave, I'm like, I'll kill you, motherfucker. Like, and like now I'm like, oh, oh my God, I was the asshole. I was the asshole. I'm having a lot yeah. of moments with thinking yeah. about both my mm -hmm. parents and my, and like, other friends of mine who were parents long before me where I'm like, wow, I've, I've been really inconsiderate and terrible in my day. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. What about I you? I guess I, I'm a bad Dallas. person is what I've realized. <laughs> um, no, I, so I super threw out my okay. back now. It was on the brink and now it is fucking done. I essentially live in this chair. I sleep in this chair. I keep uh, the nugget raised. Uh, look up a nugget. American made. No free ads. It's this big stack of cushions next to the chair where I can hoist the baby over to it quickly and do it. But essentially, I'm living in like a five foot radius now and uh, throwing out your back, man. I was thinking people in the military who throw them out, you are so fucked because it's it's not something you can see. Yeah, it's not like a broken limb. And it seems mm -hmm. like you're exaggerating because every little move I make, I'm like, oh. Uh, uh, and I can see Pat being like, okay, all right. But it's like, no, no. I cannot pick up my baby. I can't leave the house now because I can't get him in and out of the car seat. Like it is, it's like, sounds like a pussy as they say, but it's like crippling kind of. Um, no. Yeah. I mean, it is like, it's your back. Uh, Kyle had that same issue. That was the reason why he was medically yeah. retired from the Marine Corps. And he said it was terrible because he was yep. such a good Marine. He had stellar evaluations and things like that. And then once he hurt his back, because right. you can't see, it's not like a broken arm that you have a cast. People are always like, oh, do you, how bad is it? I mean, if Kyle's fucking it's complaining about it, it's pretty but, bad. Like, there's no the way dude I could serve with my back like this. I was thinking, yeah. about, I was like, there's no way I could function. And I probably looked at it as like, a sick chick queen or whatever, but like, holy shit. And then it made me think about back pain. I feel like is inevitable. The longer you stay in wearing all that heavy gear and all that dumb shit you got to do. And I imagine mm -hmm. I would like to see the rates of like regular civilians and back issues and troops and back issues. I bet it's fucking crazy, man. Um, but I just picture trying to lead troops with a bad back and I, I would fucking die. So anyway, God bless. And the old, and the old adage is yes, nobody, nobody used, used to, to have, have a bad back, back in my day. We yeah. just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no, I mean, oh, like, you yeah. don't get rid of it. Once your back, your back is bad. Oh, yeah. yeah. Basically Good bad forever. That. Yeah, you're right. Might you're, get a little bit better, Kate. Uh, I mean, if you could swallow the 800 be milligrams in the of Motrin, you'd be for a, a second? lot better. Oh, I'm taking so much ibuprofen. It's crazy. Yeah. But I'm missing my Motrin. So I'm pretty sure I went to the doctor yesterday. Oh, Wait, is it? Those are the same thing. Yeah. Oh, it's like wonderful. Tylenol good, and acetaminophen. Motrin. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah. The I go to the doctor yesterday at the hospital where I had the baby, and she's like, I think it's something, I think you have a bulging disc. You probably need an MRI. She's like, but Oof. your insurance, she's like, I'll ask, but she's like, your insurance is going to reject it. She's like, if I know the way this goes, until you do about six weeks of physical therapy, and the physical therapist can tell you, it's a disc. You, this ain't working. It's a disc. This is only making it worse. And then I call the physical therapist. They can't see you because they're book solid for three weeks. So it's like by the time I finally get what I need for this, it'll probably be gone anyway, which is brilliant. On behalf of Sorry. Insurance company. Can't you? Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm going to go to the, the VA. No, I'm going to try and call them tomorrow and be like, please, Papa, please, please, Papa, MRI, please. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's your better bet. Insurance companies are bullshit. The fact that somebody that yeah. doesn't have a medical degree can be like, I'm going to go against the, what the doctor says that you Especially should do. Especially when I like legit crazy. can't take care of my kids anymore. <laughs> like fully. It's like, I can't even leave my house. But right. anyway, yeah, I just thought that was crazy. Especially because that comes out of your pay. Like you're paying for your insurance. Like you pay for this. And they can't give it. They won't give it to you. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's my quick pitch of the day. Yeah, but I was thinking about. Too. Yeah. Troops with back pain. God bless you. My God. Um, yeah. Is that it? it? <laughs> All right. Mine, I'm very excited. Friday is the first episode of Masters of Air. I can't wait to talk about that. 
I know me and cons. I don't know if Kate will care, <laughs> but me, me and cons will watch it and talk about it. I'm actually trying to get a bunch of the guys here in Chicago to talk about it too. To come in with me and uh, me. con so that we have. Is this going to be the new like you um, say, men of battle rattle? Is this going to be the new band of brothers? Yeah, like the new it. band of brothers of type battle. of situation. Yeah. Kate reduced one of the best shows of all times to Men with I mean, Battle Rattle. Arguably the greatest miniseries ever. Yeah. With with one of the all time great directors and Steven Spielberg. One of the all time great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll say this, right. chaps. Um I'm 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 hopeful, but I'm not optimistic. I don't think Aaron Butler is is a particularly good actor. I, I think he's you know a good looking dude. I don't think he's particularly a good actor. That's I don't like my, these, my this person. negative energy starting it out cons. Listen, I don't like it. I just think the bar was set so incredibly high. Like the Pacific didn't hit that bar. And I mean, I'll give the benefit of the doubt to, to Mr. Hanks and Mr. Spielberg, but I'm just taking it a cautionary approach. I'm just not. Do you think that's because one army tradition versus Marine? What do you, what do you mean? Do you think you like Band of Brothers so much more because it was your branch rather than the this Pacific is, Theater? Oh, no, I just didn't like the storytelling approach that they did. I, I with bouncing around and everything, I'm, um, I just didn't, um, uh, yeah, I guess maybe part of it because I, I couldn't relate as much to those, uh, individuals. But I mean, I think it's widely agreed upon that Band of Brothers was the better of the two. Yeah, I so. definitely think so too. But I, I enjoyed, the Pacific. The reason why I thought the Band of Brothers, I I don't know if it's kind of like when you read a book and then you go watch the movie where mm -hmm. you're kind of disappointed that the character that you had built in your head doesn't actually meet the screen. Right. right. I had built up so far in my brain what like John Bassalone and Chesty Puller. I mean, I have tattoos of both of those guys. So I had kind of pictured what I imagined their attitudes mm -hmm. would be like. And when it didn't match on the show, I was kind of disappointed there. But other than that, I thought it was good. Not great. I'm looking forward to Masters of I Air, though. I can't believe Chet Hanks Secondly, is in general. Yeah. yeah true. Crazy. As a Jamaican, too, which is what well, a lot of mercy. What kind of what what do you um, Jamaican people like to eat for breakfast the most? Anybody I know? know what? No. Biecon. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> anyways uh a little update on my book reads i told you guys i would do that the book i'm reading this week is called west with giraffes it's the premise of it is there's a hundred year old man that's sitting in a nursing home and the main story of his life that he wants to tell is the time that in the 1930s where he helped giraffes go, try to go across the country and it's his story of how it got there he started as a 15 year old boy and it, his journey across america heartwarming as shit has nothing to do with war it's just a fella and his companion who really loves giraffes it's it's yeah. wonderful it's just wonderful other than that i don't have anything go to rumble and subscribe we just started that go to youtube and subscribe just love us please we love you and we'll see you next week sound the retreat